Well, hello there, fellow huntsmen in search of the elusive beast known as excellence. It's the Big Heavy, and today we're talking 3D printers, specifically the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and the Prusa MK3S Plus. And there's probably dozens of videos out there comparing these two brands and specifically these two printer models. And rather than flogging a dead horse, I'd like to bring two things that I don't believe have been very well covered when talking about these two printers. First off, this video is not sponsored by any means. I didn't get any of these printers free. I plunked down my cold hard cash for both of them. One of them is going to end up in the dirty sewer known as Facebook Marketplace when all is said and done. And before I get a little bit of tennis elbow by patting myself on the back, I did ask Bamboo Lab if they would send me one for free and they respectfully declined, likely due to my lack of stature and overuse of dad jokes on this channel. But the second thing that I don't think is covered is too many of these reviews focus on the specs. And I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. The Bamboo Lab's faster. It generally produces prints that are as good or better than the equivalent Prusa models. And I think for 80 to 90% of the population, they should just go and buy the Bamboo Lab printer that's at their price point, at least at this point in early 2025-ish timeframe. But I do want to hit on why I think 10 to 20-ish percent of the folks out there that are shopping for a 3D printer may want to give Prusa a second look and ultimately go in that direction rather than go towards a Bamboo Lab. And I think the reason I'd say that is ultimately because these two companies seem, at least from a product perspective and kind of the marketing they put out and you know, the general vibe behind them, that they have a different philosophy on printing and on the products that they produce. And if you think of certain brands, you know, they tend to have a personality and sometimes that's manufactured, sometimes it's very genuine, but you can tell an Apple product from a mile away versus a Samsung or Microsoft product. You can tell an early you know, 70s era American vehicle versus a 70s era Japanese vehicle just by how, they how they're designed, how they look, how they perform, what they focused on, what they've emphasized. And in this case, it's more than just you know, branding and kind of hippy dippy nonsense like that. But the usability of the products, I think some of that brand philosophy informs how the products are made and might inform how you would pick one brand versus the other as you do your own shopping. So if I had to equate these two printer brands to say automobiles, you know, I would pick like a 1968 Camaro for the Prusa printers, and I would pick, you know, a pick your poison Tesla for the Bamboo Lab printers. And what I mean by that is, you know, the Prusa you can customize infinitely. It's kind of quirky. You look at the thing and you're like, wow, that's a, a machine that has some soul to it. You know, maybe you either love or hate how it looks. You know, maybe you love or hate sort of the goofy bright orange accents that they use in their printers. But there's definitely been some design choices and you know, sort of a playfulness to the, the brand and to the equipment itself that's pretty evident when you just look through the marketing material. In my case, we got the Prusa kit and I frankly had a really good time putting it together over the course of a couple weekends with my oldest son. And I think if you're the person that a Prusa and that kind of Prusa brand philosophy appeals to, I would highly recommend you buy the kit. It's fun to put together. You, you don't necessarily understand all the nuances and details of how a 3D printer works, but you do have a much better appreciation for how the parts can fit together. You do get a little insight into, you know, how does this thing work? How do the different axes move? You know, what's an extruder? How does the filament flow? And kind of the, the different key components and how they all work together as you put this thing together. And in Prusa's case, and part of what I was talking about with that kind of brand philosophy, you can see that through the assembly process. They give you this nice thick instruction manual that's very detailed, it has nice pictures, it has little you know, comic book style pictures of the guy who founded and runs the company. I don't know if his name's Joseph or Yosef Prusa, but you know, I sort of have this imaginary vision of him living in a you know, wood cabin in the hills of, I don't know if he's in Yugoslavia or Czech Republic or somewhere like that. Yeah, there's eight feet of snow surrounding this cabin and he has no fireplace, it's just heated by 5,000 Prusa 3D printers that crank out parts to make his machines. I'm sure that vision's not accurate, but you kind of get that sense as you go through and assemble the thing. After each of the steps, they give you a big old bag of Haribo gummy bears along with a kit, and he allocates a certain fixed number of gummy bears depending on the difficulty of the step, and ultimately you end up with an empty bag of gummy bears. So, you know, hard step, you might get five gummy bears, an easy step, you might get two gummy bears. So if that sounds like the dumbest thing you've ever heard, then you're in that 90% bucket go buy the Bamboo Lab, 
if you're like, hey, that sounds like a lot of fun, maybe it's something I want to do with a you know, child or you know, partner or something like that, then maybe you're in that 10% where a Prusa would make a little more sense. Prusa also makes a big deal about the fact that they print a lot of the parts for their printer. And to some extent, I think they overhype that. There's better and more efficient ways of mass producing you know, plastic parts than having thousands of 3D printers kind of cranking away at all hours of the day, burning through electricity and burning through plastic. But there is you know, a tiny little narrow application that's legit. In my case, we had one part where you know, I screwed it up somehow. I can't remember exactly what I did, but I think I ultimately stripped out a piece of plastic that was designed to hold a little nut in. And we had our old 3D printer still set up. I had some of the appropriate filament around and you can go and download all the 3D printed parts for your Prusa and reprint them if you need to. So I was able to kind of save the day, print a new version of that part, put that into the printer and be you know, able to continue assembling relatively straightforwardly. Now that's a niche case, you know, since printing that part, I've never printed another part. I don't really see a scenario where you would you know, maybe if a part melted or something truly bizarre happened, but that's kind of a niche case. And despite the fact that there are a fair number of 3D printed parts in the Prusa printers, the key components are all metal. You know, the extruder and the nozzle and all the things that actually do most of the work are metal. The frame of the printer is metal. You know, the print bed is obviously metal. So it's not like you can kind of build one of these things from scratch or if the you know zombie apocalypse came and the zombies ate half your 3D printer you're not going to be able to fix anything but some kind of minor plastic parts that are not necessarily key to the assembly or you know, everything you would need to build yourself a new Prusa. Now you contrast that with the Bamboo Lab. And in my case, I got the X1 Carbon, or if you are a reformed citizen of Massachusetts like myself, you might say the X1 Cabin, and you would of course rate the printer itself as Wicked Pissa. But that aside, it is a great machine, but it's kind of a, you know, a soulless appliance. And I'm being both complimentary and maybe a little bit insulting when I say it's, you know, it's like a dishwasher. You know, the thing looks sleek. It looks, you know, like a modern piece of equipment versus the Prusa kind of looks like a science project that, you know, the really smart nerdy kid in high school put together. The thing's got a touch screen, you know, it's all enclosed in nice tempered frosted glass. It's got, you know, rounded corners and it just, you know, it looks like a serious piece of equipment versus, you know, again, that kind of science fair type experiment. There's no option to build it from a kit. You know, basically the getting started process involves zero included gummy bears, although you know, you're welcome to add them yourself. But instead of, you know, this nice thick manual where you're following this little comic book character who's awarding you gummy bears for doing the right thing, you're basically pulling out tape, you're pulling out blocks of styrofoam, you know, they do give you a little getting started pamphlet, you're kind of plugging in a few cables, and then you know, you're turning the thing on and mashing the screen when it says, would you like to update the software? And then mashing again when it says, would you like to sit through the ridiculously long, but highly automated and highly effective calibration process. And this is pretty indicative of, again, where those kind of brand personalities diverge a little bit. And with Bamboo Lab, probably the biggest pro and in a very niche set of cases could be a con, is everything's integrated together. The printer itself comes with a network interface already built in, unlike most of the Prusa printers. It connects to Bamboo Lab's cloud service, you know, it connects to their marketplace where you can download existing models. And all that stuff is built in, you know, it all comes set up out of the box. You kind of create an account, you go through the unboxing process, type in your you know, Wi-Fi information and you're off to the races. They also have a pretty great mobile app. You can see printing status. You can see a video feed from your printer. I don't know if all the printers have a little video camera, but the X1C does indeed have a camera on there. You can redo prints from the app, which is nice. You can't necessarily feed a new model into the printer and have it go, but I can look back and see the last, you know, I don't know if it's unlimited, but it's at least the last 10 or 15 prints I've done. And if I'm, you know, like I was this weekend, hanging out on my ladder outside, trying to finish this goofy, endless house Christmas lighting project I've been working on, and I realize I need another little bracket, I can pick up my phone, you know, go and find where I printed it before, hit go, and then the printer spins up and does its thing. Now, the Prusa proponents would say you can do all those same things with a Prusa printer. And Prusa has just, I think recently, like six months ago, launched its own version of an app that lets the printers connect to their cloud and do similar functionality. But prior to that, you could use a open source application called OctoPrint. There's a couple others out there, but they kind of represent 
the Prusa philosophy in general. You know, you can do all the cool things, but you've got to go and find some open source component or something somebody in the community built. You know, in the case of my printer, I had to go and buy a Raspberry Pi. I had to install this software on it, I had to print a little case that would mount up on the Prusa. And it looked super cool. You know, it looked like it was built into the thing, but it was just slightly janky. You know, I also ended up getting a little camera so I could see the progress of prints. And you know, aside from the fact that you can make cool little time-lapse videos and nerd out on that, you can also be sitting in another room, you know, hanging on your ladder or whatever, and see if the print has gone horribly wrong and stop it before you get too big a, a mess. But doing that, you know, required me to go and find a little camera and research what would work, get the right cable, you know, 3D print a little mount. I couldn't quite find something specific to my camera, so I made this sort of janky, hacky thing that never quite worked right. If I was doing a you know, serious print that moved the printer around a lot, the camera would tend to fall off the mount. So, you know, yes, you get this great customization ability. You have this huge support of the aftermarket community and open source community, but it's a little bit, you know, kind of duct tape and bailing wire. You know, it's kind of that 1968 Camaro where you can do everything from, you know, totally modify it, rip out the engine and do an electric conversion, do whatever the heck you want. But if you're just trying to get to work in the morning, you know, and you go to turn the key and the engine's not firing right or the thing doesn't start up, you know, it's kind of like, ah, oh, we have to go through this again. You know, I would get generally really good prints. You know, sometimes my Z axis leveling would get off. I'd have to you know, recalibrate stuff and you know, you'd end up with a print that didn't quite work and just sort of scratch your head and roll your eyes and you know, have to go through this debugging process where on the Bamboo Lab side, and granted, I'm only a couple weeks in, it does a lot of that for you. You know, it does all this calibration. Supposedly it has some AI capability where it will detect if your print has gone horribly wrong and kind of stop the spaghetti mess from getting too bad once it started. And it's again, kind of designed to be that appliance. You feed it a model, you set some parameters, you hit go, and you have a pretty reliable expectation of getting a good print out, getting it fast and not having to goof around. So if your interest is primarily in the output of 3D printing, you know, you're primarily focused on, I want to design models, I want to make parts, I want to build stuff. I don't really want to have to understand the mechanics of the 3D printer or how 3D printing works. I don't care about customizing the thing. You know, I don't care about having the absolute bestest, coolest software installed on there or being able to you know, tweak and replace parts using you know, custom stuff or community built stuff, you're probably in that 90% bucket, which is honestly where I find myself, where get the Bamboo Lab. If you got the cash for it, and I realize it's you know, fairly expensive, but considering how much 3D printers cost not that long ago, the X1 Carbon that I got with the AMS, which is essentially a machine that lets you have four rolls of filament queued up and will automatically switch between them, including the ability to switch while you're printing so you can do multicolor stuff is frankly amazing. I mean, the thing's a technological marvel. It requires, you know, surprisingly little amount of BS to get a really high quality print at a really fast speed. If you're a little more of maybe a tinkerer, you know, if you're kind of excited both by the outputs of 3D printing, as well as the process, you know, you want to understand the machine, you want to be able to tweak it, you want to be able to see how the thing works. You know, the Prusa feels like more of a, you know, backyard shade tree mechanic kind of project. You know, the thing just looks a little wacky. It looks kind of fun. It's not in this big enclosure. And you know, yes, some of the Bamboo Lab printers are also not in the enclosure, so it's approachable. All the components are open source. You, know, you don't have to worry about Prusa Lab locking something down because you can just go and delete their software and replace it with Octoprint or whatever you want versus Bamboo Lab, which again, everything's integrated, everything works together with that caveat that if Bamboo Lab decided to pull the plug, if they decided that you know, the X1 carbon is no longer the current thing and they wanna have the X2 you know, unobtainium, theoretically they could you know, shut down support for my printer, they could disconnect it from the Bamboo Cloud. There is a way to have the printer operate what's called LAN only mode, where supposedly it doesn't communicate with the Bamboo Lab Cloud. I haven't tried that. You know, It's frankly something I'm not really all that worried about. The same problem I'd have is app, if Apple decided to stop supporting their phones or you know, went out of business or, or whatnot, or you know, the same worry you have with Nest thermostats or any one of hundreds of connected products that now litter landfills everywhere. The final place I would advocate going for a Prusa instead of a Bamboo Lab printer is if you're totally new to 3D printing and you're not quite sure you want to spend the money on any sort of new printer, 
let alone the bamboo lab printers, which you know, I think in, in a lot of cases, even though when they go on sale, they might be a little bit out of your budget range. The good thing about bamboo lab kind of raising the bar in terms of speed and performance and getting a lot of Prusa people to upgrade and kind of go over to bamboo lab is there's a lot of Prusa printers that are for sale right now. And despite what I've said about, you know, performance and everything like that, the Prusa is a really solid printer. I think it was the first home focused kind of consumer grade printer where out of the box, they gave you everything you needed to produce really good prints. If for the same money, you can get a brand new Ender 3D and go do all that customization stuff or get a gently used Prusa, I would go and grab the Prusa. You can still do some customization. You can still do a lot of tweaking. You still get that ability to kind of see how everything works, understand how it's put together. It's packaged in a little more friendly format. You, know, you kind of have to go through that learning curve of playing with things and tweaking things to get perfect prints. But with the cost of some of those printers, you know, that were seven, 800 bucks not too long ago now, being in the you know two to 400 or maybe even less range, that makes a pretty compelling thing to snag in the secondary marketplace. And I've said it in previous videos, I'll say it again. If you're kind of on the fence and you've got a couple hundred bucks, which I realize is not nothing these days, but if you've got a couple hundred bucks, go nab a used 3D printer that you can hopefully sell for the same couple hundred bucks. If it doesn't excite you, grab a couple rolls of filament and just explore the possibilities. You know, there's three or four good websites where you can download models, Thingiverse, printables as Prusa's 3D model marketplace. Bamboo Lab has one, I think it's called Makerspace or something like that. But it's worth just playing with, even if you're only gonna download some of those pre can models and seeing some of the possibilities. I think there's never in my lifetime really been this piece of consumer technology. It's really kind of a small factory that you can sit on top of your table and let you produce parts, let you produce you know little machines, let you do all this really amazing stuff that you know, was previously only accessible to companies with hundreds of thousands of dollars for this type of machinery. And even if you're not you know super jazzed by this idea, it's worth getting one of these things, goofing around with a bit, you know, let your kids or other people in your household goof around with it as well. And maybe you'll awaken something. You know, maybe you'll find out that you're really interested in manufacturing or you're really interested in building parts or inventing or prototyping or you know, building little figurines of trolls or whatever floats your boat. And just explore that capability. I think that's worth doing for anyone that has even a vague notion that this might be interesting to them. And it may awaken something in you or you know one of your loved ones that changes your career direction, you know, inspires you, helps you scratch that invention itch that you've been dreaming about since you were a little kid. So strongly recommend you check these out, regardless of the brand that ultimately you end up going with. And with that, whether you are in the second, third, or fourth dimension, I will wish you all the best in whatever endeavors you undertake. And this will be the Big Heavy signing off.